With our transition away from car dependency, more and more municipalities are starting to invest in more sustainable modes of transportation. In addition to public transit, active transit caught the eyes of many as a viable mode of transportation for short to medium trips. As such, bike lanes and bike paths have been popping up all over North American cities, even in car-dependent areas. But more often than not, these newly built bike infrastructures don't see much use due to their design choices. Yet, cities across the globe have successfully established bike-friendly infrastructures that are able to completely change the transportation patterns of their citizens. Clearly, bike infrastructures can be constructed in all kinds of urban environments. So the question arises: What are the ingredients to good bike infrastructures? Segments make up the bulk of a cycling network. They act as roads for cyclists, bringing people from point A to point B safely and efficiently. To do so, proper segment design must be employed based on the surrounding built environment. Typically, there are three types of design choices: mixed traffic design, where cyclists and motorists share the same space; visually separated design, where cyclists and motorists share the same road but are separated into different lanes through visual indicators; or physically separated design. Where there are no interactions between vehicle and cyclist at all, all these designs can be found in both bike-friendly cities and car-dependent cities. The difference is that a good cycling network uses each design to their strength to maximize usability and minimize cost, while a poorly designed bike network would use the cheapest option and plaster it on every road in the city. Take Montreal for example. While visually separated designs are present in the city. They're often located on collected roads with relatively low traffic volume and speed. In areas with a lot of traffic, the city would often opt for a physically separated approach to ensure that all road users are protected. While in cities like Waterloo, visually separated design is often the only thing you can find in the city. They're often built next to high volume, high speed arterial roads that would endanger all road users. More often than not, cities would choose an inadequate bike path design over a more suitable one due to financial and political reasons. Yet this half-assed approach would only fuel car dependency by discouraging people to try other modes of transportation. Choosing the proper segment design is essential for creating a bike-friendly environment, and many cities need to completely reevaluate the way they build bike lanes. While segment design is certainly crucial, it is not the only component that makes up a good cycling network. Intersection design is also incredibly important at making our cities more bike friendly. Due to the nature of our cities, it is inevitable for our cycling infrastructures to cross paths with a road at one point or another. Intersections bring cyclists and motorists into direct contact. Because of this, intersections are perhaps the most dangerous part of a cycling network. Despite only making up a very small fraction of the overall network, smart intersection design will minimize cyclist and motorist interaction, while bad intersection design will literally throw cyclists to the wolves. Intersection design can take on many different forms. Pavement markings such as bike boxes give cyclists priorities during intersection crossing, all the while places cyclists out of motorist blind spot. Alternatively, municipalities can install protective physical barriers, which completely removes motorist and cyclist interaction, all the while allowing cyclists to cross the street without entering the blind spot of a turning driver. Another extremely simple design is to install cycling traffic lights and provide dedicated signal faces for cyclists. This will give cyclists and pedestrians priorities to cross the road without interference from motorists. There are many different ways to design safe and effective intersections that are able to cater to motorists, cyclists, and pedestrians. Yet far too often, cities don't utilize these design choices, thereby creating an unsafe intersection and crossings that put everybody's life in danger. Working together, segments and intersections form the basis of a bike-friendly environment. Yet one often overlooked part of active transit engineering is bike parking. Unlike cars, bikes are incredibly easy to steal, so cities need to provide the necessary amenities for people to store their bikes at shops and businesses. 
Unfortunately, the classic bike parking racks are often not enough to deter thieves from stealing bike parts. As such, more advanced bike parking facilities such as bike lockers and bike parking stations are put into place where there are significant cycling travel demand. The good news is, the attitude towards cycling is slowly changing in North America, even in previously car-dependent cities. Cities like Toronto are mandating buildings to include bike parking spaces as a part of the city's bylaw, and cities all over Canada are incorporating safe intersection design as a part of their existing cycling network. Clearly, municipalities are trying to encourage cycling as a more viable means of transportation. It might not happen tomorrow, but bike-friendly cities might become a reality sooner than you think. Hey folks, thanks for watching yet another video. There are some extra readings in the description on bike path and intersection designs. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider to leave a like and subscribe. As always, this is the Transportation Channel, and I'll see you next time.